moccasins back with another video before we begin just to run through a couple quick announcements uh, if you are interested in signing up for uh, the various different classes that I offer the way to do that is to go to the official uh, primordial chaos uh, patreon page patreon.com uh, forward slash beniti b-a-n-i-t-i -I, that's patreon.com forward slash beniti b-a-n-i-t-i -I, tier three is the tier you want to join tier three gives you access to the three private classes i do every month on patreon in addition to the group ritual we do at the end of the month together okay there's a bunch of ongoing series on there, as i said uh, on multiple different uh, left-hand path occult topics. Uh, there's ongoing series on ancient Egyptian vampirism, um, Luciferian uh, magic and self-mastery, Klopathic sorcery. There's an uh, ongoing series of Sith classes on there, Kundalini uh, awakening and meditation uh, classes, um, esoterical occult Bible study classes, and many more. Um, check it out again, patreon.com forward slash Beniti, B-A-N-I-T-I. -I. Tier 3 is the tier you want to join to get access to the classes. Also, if you're interested in a spiritual consultation or spiritual reading, I offer various different readings. Uh, Klopathic demonic readings, uh, Santa Muerte readings, Egyptian oracle readings, deity readings, shadow work readings. Um, for a full list of readings and how to book a reading or a consultation, just shoot me an email at khnum19 at gmail.com and I will send you information on how to book a reading or a spiritual consultation. Okay. Uh, also, the 6th Annual Journey of the Black Adept Conference is in full effect. You can sign up and register for that now. Uh, it's a four-day event that begins on Thursday, October 19th with a meet and greet uh, Friday and Saturday, which is the 20th and the 21st of October from 9 to 4 p.m. We have classes, workshops, present presentations, speakers. Uh, then we come back in the evening on both nights around 7, 8, 7, 38 ish to do group ritual work. And then Sunday, the 22nd, I close the event out with a Q&A session from noon to 4 p.m. You could also attend the uh, conference virtually and get access to the classes and the workshops and speakers on Friday, Saturday, and Sundays uh, classes and presentations. So shoot me an email, uh, khnum19 at gmail.com, and I'll send you that information. Don't forget to also check us out. Uh, check out the Primordial Chaos Instagram page at Primordial Chaos 9, all one word, and also the uh, Primordial Chaos Facebook page, two words, uh, on Facebook. All right. Also, keep in mind this: all this new content is being uploaded to the Primordial Chaos Podcast, which is available on Spotify and all major podcast platforms. The direct link to the podcast, the link for the Primordial Chaos Patreon page to sign up for classes, my contact email address, uh, the Instagram page, and the Facebook page. All of that is in the description box of this video that you are current you're watching all right so we're going to stay along the line more with the uh egyptian hecker energy for the moment it's where the spirit is guiding us uh so i want to focus probably today on a couple or, or do a series of some of the these tutorials on the uh ancient egyptian deities that are affiliated with the egyptian hecker path right so let's talk about ample aka Anubis, right? The different titles and the names obviously come from Greek. Uh, sometimes you'll get it in a more more of its uh, original context and forms from the language that predate it, but uh, Anubis is the Greek way to pronounce the name, which everybody is familiar by. Ample or Anubis goes back, uh, you know, when you get into the, now, again, whether you believe the Metroneter is a, you know, there's always been a debate. Is it a, can it be a translated spoken language? Was it a pictorial language where it just speaks in symbols and codes? There's, I'm not going to get into all that. That's a discussion for another time. But it takes it more back 
to how it was pronounced in ancient Egypt and Ampu is more of a correct pronunciation. Um, so let's talk about, and again, more from a perspective of how we would work with Anubis or Ampu or what he represents from a left-hand path uh, Egyptian Hecker perspective. Right? Ampu is a powerful gateway deity. As we know, he connects you what they would call in ancient Egypt the underworld or the afterlife uh, or, the, or the spiritual abode. Um, now, the interesting thing with Anubis or Amp, or as I've said before, in relationship to Set, uh, you know, sometimes they can be confused uh, the way they're depicted and presented. Sometimes it, they almost seem uh, very similar uh, in appearance to but they obviously are extremely very different. As I said, Set, it's very, uh, you know, there's so much opinions on the animal mask or the deific animal mask that Set wears and what that really represents, right? Uh, some say, you know, it looks like a jackal. Uh, it looks kind of looks like a, uh, you know, a donkey, a horse. Uh, you know, there's no definitive explanation of what that animal mask of Set is that he wears, and there's a reason for that, as I said before, because he he, rep he represents uh, you know that pure, prime, uh, chaotic energy or chaos. So yes, there's mis there's many theories and opinions on what it is, but there's not you know 100% factual conclusion of what that is, and for a reason. Ampu or Anubis, we know, is affiliated with the black jackal or the black dog uh, uh, of the dead in ancient Egypt and as I said before when it came to funerary rites or the afterlife which was always done as a celebration that's where the color black comes in and as I've said in previous videos if you ask a, for an example a very popular custom here in the west in Christianity is to wear black to funerals but yet this is found nowhere in their Bible. So the, the question I brought up many times over the years is where does this custom or practice come from? Again, as we know, many things filtered down from ancient Egyptian practice into, into monotheism, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. That was one of the things uh, that obviously did because that's there. They're confirming uh, the presence and the existence of Ampu slash Anubis, one of the many other rites that again trickle down into Christianity that they pretty much use and most aren't aware of. Ampu is a gateway deity, again, that bridges the physical life to the spiritual life. We see in a lot of the ancient Egyptian texts the opening of the mouth ceremony, guiding the soul through the underworld. Um, that, that role, that position is given to him in the text. Now, as I said, when you go prior to the 22nd and 23rd dynasties of ancient Egypt, the position in relationship to Ampu or Anubis, okay, with uh, Osir or Osiris, Osir or Osiris, that position originally was held by Set. That got changed later, okay? So Anubis, who guides the soul through the underworld or the afterlife or the spiritual abode, right? Also, we use Anubis to, Anubis to or Anu Ample to open up various aspects of the astral realm. You know, you know, we, we connect and invoke him to open up those portholes or gateways to connect us to, and again, I'm using just simple terms people can connect with, the spiritual realms, right? As I said, the spiritual planes and realms are interwoven around you. They're not above you. They're not below you. Okay, get get all that nonsense out your head, right? As I said, the real science of the Baphomet, as above, so below, as within, so without, it's really pay attention to what it's saying. It's saying there is no above, there is no below, there's only within, and there's only without, which confirms what we're calling the spiritual planes, the spiritual realm, the underworld, the void, the abyss, right? These planes, which we can activate through the power of our subconscious mind are all interwoven around us, okay? So it's not that there's literally an above and below, okay? 
So this is something we need to grasp. And once an individual is vibrating at a certain frequency and they make themselves less dense, they are able to open up the doorways, or as they say in ancient Egypt, the pylons or the entranceways to enter these realms. And that's where Anubis comes in. Anubis is also, or Ampu also is a great archetype or spirit or, or, or God, whatever you want to refer to, uh, to open up and enhance and receive communications in your dreams through the dream state, which we know dream, the dream realm or, the, or, 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 or when you're in a state of dream and that's a form of connecting with the astral planes. I've said many times over the years, uh, a good practice. And one thing that I do is if you keep some type of a representation, energy or element of Anubis close to where you sleep, uh, whether it's on your nightstand, uh, or somewhere close to where you sleep and just do a simple uh, invocation before you retire for the night and, and, and go into the dream world, uh, connect with Anubis in, in your own personal way to, you know, invoke him to guide you through your dreams. If there's anything that needs to be shown to you or any messages personally for you that you need to receive, you know, that simple acknowledgement before retiring to bed can be a very powerful tool or vessel that can open you up to the dream world or, or which is again, another form of the astral. Okay, so when we talk about gateway deities, we talk gateway deities, we talk about them being a bridge or a connection to these spirits on this plane. And that's where the power of Anubis comes in. Now, also, there is a lot of spiritual science to, to Nubu with the activation, as I talked a little bit about in the last video, of the spirit, the soul. And the Agatho daemon, or what we might know across the board as the personal daemon, the higher or the truest self. Because when one can, when one connects with Ampu or Anubis, they are connecting with an aspect. Uh, you know, when we talk about these spiritual planes or astral planes or realms, remember when you start to connect with those, you are vibrating outside of a three dimensional understanding and a three-dimensional existence, right? Three dimension is confined to person, places, and things. Just so we're clear on that. Three dimension is confined to person, places, and things. And this is why I say many times, sometimes uh, questions arise or there's concepts or there's spiritual wisdom that one will not get the full understanding or inner standing or overstanding or above the standing, whatever you want to refer to it as, uh, in a three-dimensional understanding and existence because some some of the answers to these things exist outside of three-dimensional existence. See, and this is why people that are trapped in, in lesser dogmas, lesser philosophies like religion, especially uh, the three major monotheistic religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, they're all governed by ABCs, one, two, three, person, places, and things, okay? Okay, there's always the, you know, the one, two, three concept of a supreme God. There's always the concept, two of messengers, and then three prophets that are sent to the messengers that they have to follow and, and worship. So it's always, again, you could even translate it deeper, there's always prophet, holy book, Congregation. I mean, it's always done in ones, twos, and threes, ABCs, person, place, and thing. And there's nothing in those lesser religions that don't fall under person, place, or thing. Nothing. Okay? Even their, even their quote-unquote higher forms of spiritual mysteries like heaven, it's still a place. Okay? They, they, there's nothing they're going to teach you. That's not outside of person, place, or thing. Well, Anubu or Ampu activates that higher understanding that exists outside of person, place, or thing. This is how we would connect with Ampu uh, working in an ancient Egyptian Heka. Uh, Ampu can also activate your 
highest spiritual faculties, which you, we, we may, or some may know as clairvoyance, intuition, telepathy, psychometry, uh, all those things that are your psychic and spiritual abilities. Uh, Ample is uh, a great archetype or deity to work with that. Now, for an example, let me give you an example. When I do my Egyptian oracle readings, uh, that is the particular deity or spirit that does the communication. Because when, when I do an Egyptian oracle reading, I'm connecting with Ampu or Anubis to connect me to those spiritual realms. Now, there is also... And again, I have to be careful how I use this word. You know, I'm not crazy about using that word, dark and darker and darkity dark and all that, you know, that shit, because that gets a little played out. But there is a very darker or intenser side of Ampu or Anubis, too. In addition to all of those things that I just mentioned, we also need to understand this nature and energy of Ampu or Anubis. He can be used uh, also because being a gateway deity, he can be used also to remove blockages. Uh, he can be invoked to destroy weaknesses. So there's a warrior aspect in certain cases, scenarios, and situations that the practitioner can connect with in their spiritual work if they're working with Ampu or Anubis. Okay? Uh, he's also connected with high forms of what we would call necromancy, uh, working with the spirits of the dead. Um, a lot of people will always ask me, because we work a little bit different with our ancestors on the left-hand path or the occult as, say, the mainstream traditional practitioner does, okay? Um, and the question always arises, can you put deities or demons or spirits or gods or goddesses on your ancestral altar? And I'm bringing this up in relation to Ampo and, and, and Anubis, but also I've always answered that question when people have brought it up with a very simple answer. Any gateway deities that connect you to the spirits of the dead only, or any deities that connect with the necromancy current, yes, can be placed on an ancestral altar. But that would be it. You don't want to start placing any and everything on there because you're working again with a certain vibrational frequency. You're working with your bloodline ancestors. Some of you guys have, or, or you know, depending on your experience on the path have also spiritual ancestors, which is different from bloodline ancestors. These are sometimes spirits that are passed down from generation to generation that have walked in your family. Um, so a spirit saying all that, a god or a goddess like Ampu or Anubis can be placed on an ancestral altar. Because being what he represents to us on the occult, left-hand path, Egyptian Heka, he is a gateway or a bridge deity to, to what we're calling the spiritual realm. Which, I, I, again, I don't like to really call the realm of the dead. Uh, you know, in Greek they'll say uh, he's the god over the necropolis, right? And the word necropolis, if you break down the word necro, right? You hear that word, necromancy, right? Uh, yeah, that's the Greek word for dead, right? So when we when when we using this word, the reason why I don't really care for it too much is because really that is the realm of eternal life. That's real living. As I've said many times before, what society in the mainstream has convinced us that this physical mundane existence is living and technically when you look at it, it's it's one of the many stops on your journey, but as I've said before, the moment you proceeded out of the womb of your mother, the dying process physically began to start. Because once you came from that primordial chaotic uh, abode or existence where you were comfortably wrapped in the fetal position of the divine female or the divine feminine, we'll talk a little further about that another time, and you came out of the womb of your mother, that's when the dying process actually started. So we've got it backwards. What we're terming as as far as an evolving process of, of living and dying is kind of reversed. Now, that doesn't mean you don't enjoy this cycle leading to that next phase or part of evolution in your journey. 
But as you get older, think about it physically. In this physical mundane existence, life becomes more difficult for you, right? We get older, we age, and sometimes physical ailments, well, not sometimes, physical ailments start to kick in, etc. So I don't like to refer to that abode as the realm of the dead as it's so referred to in many different places. I, I, I look at it as the abode of the eternal living or eternal life. Okay? So Ampu can be placed on a necromancy or, or an ancestral altar where you venerate and acknowledge the spirits of the dead. Okay? So he is one of many others out there, but we're focusing in this particular video with Ampu or Anubis. Okay? So Again, I just wanted to run through, not to stay too long-winded with it, because um, I'm about to be at my destination. It's about a minute or two away, so I'm kind of going to wrap this up. Uh, so this is just, again, a good foundational, uh, again, tutorial that's going to help and assist you in understanding Ampu, how to work with Ampu, what he represents. Um, it's a little different, again, when we talk about working with... The Egyptian deities and what we call through the aspect of Egyptian hacker, uh, you know, it's clear if you're familiar with what we do, it's a little bit different uh, than what the mainstream practitioner who works with ancient Egypt uh, in their own in their own you know context or perspective. That's probably again a little bit more laid back than probably what we would do okay and that's fine you know and you're entitled but remember we're trying to as i said in the previous video on egyptian hacker we're trying to get that right harmonious formula of light and darkness that each of us need to be a self-perfected uh, being or a master or, or what we're destined to be a god or a goddess that's the goal Right, and it's a process ciphering through that to, to get that balance or harmony of light and darkness. Okay, that's the challenge, that's the goal. Right, so whereas other paths might be working to the extreme of one or one, one or the other, we're not trying to do that because, as I said, a well rounded black adept or magician has the right formula that they need for themselves to obtain that inner spiritual harmony that's going to connect them to their higher self aka the personal daemon and activate the uh, awareness of the energy and the energy of the personal daemon within the psyche of the practitioner all right so this is uh, again hopefully this this video has helped you understand a little bit better of how we work with Anubis or Ampu on the left-hand path of the occult through the form of the spiritual practice we refer to as Egyptian Hekka. All right? If you need to reach out to me, you can reach out to me at khnum19 at gmail.com. If you need to reach out to me about the 6th Annual Journey of the Black Adam Conference, or if you want to uh, send me an email to receive information how to book a spiritual reading or a consultation, that's the way you reach out to me. Um, also keep in mind the direct link to the Primordial Chaos podcast along with the direct link to the Patreon classes again if you want to get in and sign up on the, for the Patreon classes and that's where I do all my private classes I do three a month on Patreon for Patreon members only if you want to go to patreon.com forward slash Beniti B-A-N-I-T-I tier 3 will give you access to the three private classes I do every month on Patreon, in addition to the group ritual we do together at the end of the month. All right, so the direct link to the Patreon page to sign up for classes, the direct link to the podcast, uh, the direct link to the social media pages on Instagram and Facebook, all right, and my contact email address, all of that is in the description box of this video that you are watching right now. That's how you can get all that information uh, through those links all right having said that i am at my destination nine rounds 
I will try to shoot a second video in transition over to Planet Fitness. All right, we'll talk soon. Final blessings.